my friends and welcome back to EVE Online with me, Mark from Dadex and today I'm going to be flying a Gila but the Gila is by no means the star of the show in fact I'm Gila number two to be quite honest with you I've got an escalation to a 6 out of 10 in Intarki which is in low sec which is where 6 out of 10 spawn there and null sec of course we've got three and a half hours left on the timer there we need to get on with it okay so first of all let's have a look at the site now there are two sites to run here the first site escalates into the second site first thing to note about the first site is it offers no loot whatsoever there may be some wreck loot but no one's ever hung around to find out that i know of anyway if we look at the description it does say down here they are considered to be the hardest serpentis escalations Use extreme caution when completing the sites due to the scramming frigates and the T2 muting towers. And indeed, it is the amount of frigates here that are going to put a point and a web on you. And the newt towers, which are Tech 2 newt towers, that are quite hard work for a solo ship. These can be run solo. They have been run solo. Dexter runs them solo in his Tengu, which is going to feature in this video. But today we're going to run it differently, partly for speed partly for the location and because even in that Tengu which is quite expensive I think it's about 1.4 bill it is a handful it can get scary he hasn't lost one yet but now he likes to take an alt what we're here to do at the moment is to run the first room or the first site I should say from an escalation I got when we ran a rally point over a few systems away that escalated to this room here the first site sorry I keep calling it room it's the first site Dexter has already run the first site on his escalation, although I think he actually scanned it down because he can be scanned down in low second null sec. He's run the first site already and that escalated to the second site in the same system as my first site. So in this video we're going to run my first site and then his second site. We'll have a little look at the second site walkthrough when we get around to doing that. So what we've got to do here, and this is what makes this real pain, not only what is on the site, you've got to run a whole site no loot just to get to the site with the loot but is it worth it that's what we'll find out the priority targets are going to be the frigates whenever they appear and the newting towers okay we've got to get to intarki and to get to intarki from where we are based we've got to fly first through austin gale which is a wonderfully noisy faction warfare system also a low set gateway system so just that entry traffic means it might be camped it's going to be hectic it's going to be noisy in fact, since we ran this site, there's been a, a cap battle in here. Seems to be over a station. This guy's turned up. The station's involved, I think, in this kill. Yeah, there you go. So maybe these guys, cruiser's crew are bashing a station. Down under Syndrome, drop on them. And then not long after that, snuffed out turned up dropped on them and it was a whole big mess if we get the battle report you can see that in the end 23 bill on one side 11 bill on the other side and the cruiser's crew kind of snuffed out yeah bit of a mess low sec mess the battle reports don't always come out very clearly but that's the kind of thing that happens in this system on top of that it can be camped and that's quite likely because it is a, a gateway from high sec that's all of that battle, most of that there. If you go to page two, you will see that this is on any day a very, very busy faction warfare system. That's still that battle there. There you go. All these kills here. Little ships, faction warfare, bang, 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 bang. A very busy system to be sneaking through. Then we've got to go to Agoze, which is another faction warfare system. These two systems, in fact, seem to be the, the border between Galante and Caldari space. There are militia fleets in each system ready to play. They're playing faction warfare full on. They're usually fleeted up. It's not a good place maybe to come to do 1v1 faction warfare. Not sure. It's not the ideal place to be cruising through with a, a, what's going to be about two bills worth of ships. But that's what we've got to do. Finally get to Intarki, which I'm happy to say is a lot quieter. Certainly kills every day people to be looked out for and precautions to be taken but not quite as hectic apart from that day wow <laughs> i'll look at that later that was a busy old day anyway in general a little bit quieter but we've got to get through the first two busy systems and to do that we're going to scout them out with an alt we've done that before we get to the footage of us running the mission we dropped bookmarks in the systems so they're in a shared folder so we've got somewhere to run to if we need to run We've scouted them out, we've checked the gates, and then we get the three ships through that we're going to use for the run. 
actually before we move on from the kill board just notice this kill here this guy come in in a one bill blaghorn obviously has bad Eden Com stand-ins you get a warning before you come into the system but the gun towers on the gate have got him in his blaghorn he's then tried to bug out in his escape imicus they've got that and then they podded him luckily for him he had an empty pod I guess a ship like that may well have a blinged out pod but there you go remember keep an eye on those stand-ins if Eden Com don't like you they will kill you so here we are waiting on the gate for the rest of the fleet to arrive there will be lots of de-scanning going on during this run i may not mention it but it's going on lots and lots and we're all set at different ranges so uh yet far's at one i think miss Valazi's at five and i'm going to stay at ten so we'll get a nice view of what's going on between us the plan inside is yet far in the tengu is fc miss Valazi in the second gila is going to anchor onto him and i'm going to anchor onto her by anchoring we mean you just set approach or keep at range on that ship and then you will follow the FC around like ducks in a row that is the plan at least initially a little challenge for the FC is that we have different ranges etc to his ship so he does have to learn how to get us into effective range when we're following him it's all part of the FC skills that you only pick up by practice there's a little bit more to FCing than people sometimes give it credit for that is for sure so as we arrive on grid we want to get our navigation sorted out get the afterburner on start locking up the frigates they're the priority target remember i remember to do all of my drone housekeeping before i came out to the site for those of you that saw the last video and all of that <laughs> so the drones are out obviously gila drones are mighty we've got a nice range we are an perfect complement to the tengu the tengu is the big fish we are the escorts if it comes to the crunch we're probably going to be the expendables and that's okay that's what we're here for we've also got a bit of a, a leeway here as you will see this can be done with one gila and the tengu reasonably comfortably just takes a little bit longer but because we're in such a potentially hostile area getting this done as quickly as possible and getting out is definitely a big contribution to the overall mission security so it is something to consider and um, you know we've been doing a few videos lately where it isn't just solo stuff i'm a little bit disappointed that the two cheap kestrels doing the uh, burner mission hasn't had more views because uh hopefully you know i'm trying to open up things to people to do with maybe cheaper ships just by getting a friend and doing more of them multi-screening is obviously one way you can do it if you're lucky enough to have more than one account and be able to afford to run those but in general i do encourage you to get sociable over time you can build a little bit of trust with people and uh, you've got to stick your neck out speculate to accumulate but yeah stuff like this is so much less stress when you know you've got a little bit of leeway we've got the extra dps i mean we're adding about 120 percent to the dps compared to the tengu was doing this by itself so it's all pretty good we want to be out of here as quickly as possible but yeah you got some company you're spreading the aggro you're obviously upping the dps in theory two of you can run sites in half the time and get twice as many done in the same amount of playtime. so you'll end up with the same amount of loot if you looked at it like that the bounty payments will be split anyway between the fleet and the bounty payments are nice and you sort the loot out amongst yourselves there's plenty to go around i can promise you that as usual running sites is a little bit feast and famine Yep, Far certainly seems to have been getting on quite well with the Loot Fairy lately. Before we made this video in the week before, he's probably made about two bill himself, just pottering around solo, hammering sites wherever he found them all over Placid. Some nice sights, and indeed some nice fights too. We'll look at those another time. Anyway, we are plodding our way through these guys. D scanning is revealing nothing too scary at all going on at the moment. What we also did when we came into the system it was a little bit busy there are a few people around we don't know anybody obviously so we just came in got in a station where nobody else was docked and logged out so they don't know whether we've left the system necessarily or not if they see people strangers hanging around in local i know as a local in my own local as it were that you just well what are they up to they must be here for something you'll keep an eye on them so sometimes just log out and disappear for a bit log back in much quieter we're in the second room now and there are a lot of frigates to be taken down straight away now this room does have the tech 2 newting towers spawn in it and as soon as we get one it latches onto me we're a little bit slow 
getting onto it to get it taken down. I came in this room with about 60% capacitor, with hindsight probably better to linger on the gate, get a bit more cap back just to be safe. But as I say, these dealers are here to do exactly this. Take up the uh, new pressure, take up the EWA, kill everything a bit quicker. So I'm going to get completely capped out. I'm going to stay on grid as long as I can, because <laughs> it's me, isn't it? And I'm just going to warp off, dock up, come straight back out and carry on. The Tengu and the Lone Gila will be fine. D-Scan's pretty chilled out. Nothing scary going on there. But I am going to have to waddle off back to the station. And I have slowed the footage down of me getting capped there back into real time, just so you saw how quickly it sucked me dry. But I'm losing my shield, so I'm going to make my excuses and leave. Oh, I also should mention that these are literally grab-and-go gealers. The gealer I'm flying is your off-the-peg passive gealer fit. Nothing has been changed for this site. Miss Falaise's gealer is slightly different. I think it's got a bit of a, a passive regen boost on that one. The Tengu's fitted with cat batteries. It's got target painter. I'm not going to go into the details of Yetfar's Tengu fit. It's not my business to do so. Not yet anyway, eh? When it dies, you can see the keel mail. Let's put it that way. I'm arriving back on grid after my little regen, got me shields back, got me capacitor back. As you can see from my watch list, now Miss Falazi has taken a bit of aggro, but with your hardeners running, it shouldn't ever get too hectic. Remember to keep your afterburner running because you do need that speed to protect you. I mean, look at all that fire flashing past me there. So I'm going to get back caught up with Miss Falazi. In fact, no, I'm not. I'm just going to head for the gate now. So but this is the second room out of three. They're pretty similar. No loot. Check that D-scan. <laughs> D-scan and the locals are much more of a concern here than the site. That is basically the point I'm trying to make, as, along with all the others that I'm trying to squeeze in. So we're going to head over to this other gate. But unfortunately, just as we're about to go through it, my PC crashes. So we have to leave yet far to clear last room by himself he does so successfully i get up there right at the last knock-ins so we've got the S we've got my escalation to the second site of the six out of ten which funnily enough has uh, actually given us that escalation back in the system where we started so part two of the serpentis logistical outpost it's pretty much a repeat of the first it is more hectic it's less rooms but there's a lot more density of rats Again, we do get a warning that this is tough. Again, there are lots of frigates here that are going to keep trying to scram and web us. On the wall pin, before you even get through a gate, we've got all of this to deal with. There are two Tech 2 neutralizers right there. When we arrive, there are two that spawn after two minutes. They need to be taken down quite quickly, as we've seen. Then the acceleration gate. Then we're into the second room, and we've got lots and lots of frigates. It's a horde absolute horde of frigates these guys basically spawn each other so whatever you do there's a lot of frigates to work through during the site so solo you're inevitably going to end up situations where you're getting webbed and you're getting pointed which is never good anyway because the rats will apply their damage also anyone joins you on grid you're pre-pointed for them so you really really don't want that so again absolute priorities are to get all the frigates off grid as quick as possible and then deal with the Newton Towers as and when. The boss is a little bit of a hard boss to fight. Here he is, you hero Katzen. He's basically the last thing that spawns off this main central group that you'll see in the room. He drops all of the loot. He's the only one that has loot on him in the room. He's very tough. He does 1050 DPS. If we actually look, there's a link here to him get some details on him so his resistance weakness is kinetic he's putting out pretty much 50 50 thermal and kinetic damage his range is quite short he's got 11 kilometers range with a 10 kilometer fall off he will start shooting at you from miles away which is silly he's immune to all you are and he will web us through a 15 kilometer range 90 percent speed reduction and he charges out at us so that's the boss again if he gets the web's on you when you're so low and starts hitting you. He is very, very scary just by himself. So that is what we're faced with. At least in this one, we get some loot. Hopefully it's nice loot. Only the loot fairy knows. 
Oh, I should say that once you've done the first site and get the escalation to the second site, you do then have 24 hours as you would normally to go and run the second site. You don't have to run straight there. Okay, so we're heading out to the second site landing on grid now. Exactly the same drill as before, really. Some of them are up pretty close. The cruisers and battle cruisers will apply quite a bit of DPS if you let them crowd up. So once the frigates are cleared and we're taking care of the towers, obviously the battleships need to be kind of ground through. But if the battle cruisers and cruisers do start getting close, that's where the missiles are going to go. Lots of descanning going on. Nothing too dodgy going on. I guess what we're looking for is somebody coming through local, maybe coming straight back in in a more combat-y type ship. Sudden local spike, of course, if the numbers go up, we want to be quite attentive to what's going on. There's lots of flashy people coming in and out as we're running these sites just because they're uh, doing faction warfare and stuff next door. So don't take everything too seriously, but do try to keep aware of what's going on. Combat probes, especially at this stage, if anyone combat probes us now, they're going to land right on us. We haven't gone through a gate yet on this second site, this first fight. Is all somewhere anyone can warp straight to, so do be extra attentive at this stage. They don't even have to follow you through a gate. If they can probe you down, they will be straight on grid of you and straight in your face. Also, while I remember to mention it, the first site took about 20 to 25 minutes to run. The second site takes about 35 to 40 minutes to run. Obviously, I've sped up the footage, so it might have been hard for you to keep track just off the times on the screen. Also, in the interest of security, between doing the first site and the second, we did just dock up again in a station with no company, log out for a while, have something to eat, come back and do this one, just so we're not staying out there to be seen for so long in one continuous stretch. Just can attract too much interest. Anyway, I'm getting newted out again. I told you these newts were pretty ferocious. They are spawning just outside of our drone range, so by the time we're getting turned in, that's all the time they need to suck me dry. And yet again, no hassle, no drama. That's exactly what we're here for. So this isn't happening to the Tengu. The value of the two Gilas is half the value of the Tengu. So um, yeah, that's just the way it is. I'm happily Gila number two. The damage is mounting up again. I'm going to ride it out. My resistance modules are out, but we're off. The drones are in, are they? No, the game gave me the warning. I'm glad it does that. Over the years, I have left so many drones behind. I'm glad you get that little warning now. So, still got plenty of shield left to wait for the boys to get in. I'll be off to rep up, recharge my batteries. But while we're doing that, let's talk about this handsomely splendid Abaddon skin. They're the winners of the last giveaway. Those six lucky guys got their skin codes sent to them a few days ago. For your chance to win a skin code, comments down below, please. Six out of tens, do you run them? Have you tried it? Do you guys form small gangs to go and hit sites fast and hard, get in and get out before the locals notice you? Any feedback, any suggestions down below in a comment. Remember to include your in-game name to be included in the giveaway. And you'll notice here that I was so short of capacitor when I walked out, I couldn't make it all the way back to the station. So uh, second leg of the journey, off we go. Getting back on grid now, all fresh and ready for action. The two Gila's are both passive tanked. So they've got quite a signature radius bloom going on compared to the Tengu, which isn't. So they are getting hit a little bit harder, attracting, attracting a little bit more aggro maybe. I'm not sure quite how aggro is managed by the rats. If you know the science, let me know. It'd be nice if you could switch it at will, but we've never figured out quite how to. So lots of de-scanning, lots of killing of rats. The towers can be a bit of a pain. I think as long as you get the frigates down and get the neutralizing towers down, you will not really have too much trouble from the rest of the rats. As long as you keep your range, don't let them swamp you. All the usual kind of PVE stuff, to be quite honest with you. I did just switch to Fury Ammo, which is shorter range, but better damage on these big battleships. That's all we've got left here to deal with just for the moment. So I'm getting the... I'm getting a good idea of how long a reload lasts on the rats, so uh, whether it's worth switching. Kaldari Navy ammo is the other ammo that we're using, especially useful for taking down those frigates, etc. Quick and fast earlier on. You certainly don't want them there pointing you if you do get joined on grid at any stage. And obviously, if we were to be attacked by other players joined on grid, 
the fact there's three of us here gives us, you know, that swarm defense that they don't really know which one to grab. The Gila's are certainly going to kind of put themselves in harm's way so the Tengu can bug out. That is really plan A. But then again, we've got plenty of DPS and quite a bit of tank on grid. So depending on what is uh, popping up to say hi, we might be able to fight it off. Getting a kill is unlikely because none of us have got a tackle. But we could certainly look after ourselves. And hopefully, as I say, the main objective is to keep the Tengu safe. We are his escorts. We pretty much got this big mob here clear. At least then we can get through the gate. If anyone does combat probe us down, they will have to be at 1AU on the gate to get into where we are. So at least we're past that kind of most exposed part of this site running in a mix of a big bag of rats where anyone could just come and join us should they spot where we are. So we're all cleaned up here. D-scan's still looking nice and chilled out. We're going to get on into the second room. And we've got to get through the big central group. I don't really show you too well. I apologise that's up there. you just got to keep grinding them down until they keep respawning. Frigates will spawn more frigates. So just keep ploughing through them. That's what the drones are there for. Not at all worried about a bit of EWAR at the moment. But yet again, I've got the new towers spawns not long after you land on grid. And it's straight onto me. <laughs> so again, you know, this is why we brought two Gilas. Exactly why. I'm not ashamed. Hope I don't die. <laughs> I got out in armour, pushing my luck, waiting for those drones to get back in, because I'm a very conscientious drone controller. Back on grid, keep going, keep going. It's a bit of a grind, it is a bit of a grind, and you just watch that D-scan. As I say, not the longest site in the world to run, but not the shortest either, about 40 minutes. It does feel a little bit relentless when you're on grid. I mean, I can't say we've managed the spawns in any kind of scientific way. We're just killing it all. While we were on our way in, or I should say actually doing the recon, we saw an alt called Rix Jarvix in, in a goes. He's with a corp called Stay Frosty. They're very into left faction warfare. He also produces some magnificent Eve art. I'm showing you some examples right now. I'll link down below to his flicker and you can have a look through there at your leisure all kinds of things from practical size illustrations such as that to some very very nice art indeed we first heard of him actually because dexter when he was in iceland and he blagged the ccp tour brought home a set of stickers and it was only when we were showing those off online that somebody said oh that's all rick rick's jarvis art so this is the guy, I even approve of that, and I've been a Clash fan since 1979. So there are other kinds of EVE content to be enjoyed out there. You just need to know where to look. Flying around in this little fleet reminds me of playing EVE about 10 years ago in Drake's running level 3 missions with my old court mates at the time. A couple of whom are still in the game. Grey Lord, Kane and Black Soul are out there in Nullsec somewhere. So the guys from back then, I think most of them have stopped playing now. Which is a bit of a shame, they're some good guys. So if you do play EVE solo, do experiments with being a little bit sociable. It could pay dividends. The social side of EVE is just as fun as the pew pew side of EVE. We went on roam the other night for about an hour. Well, I think we only managed to get three kills, but we had a nice laugh. It's not all about the kill mouse and the glory. Some lovely fleet action screenshots to be had there. A fine sight indeed. Gila's holding tight formation. Nice and neat. We've had a very quiet time in here. Quite often you'll find the gateway system to a low sec pocket is very busy. Simply people hang out there. There's through traffic to be preyed upon. People who don't really know quite what they're doing in low sec yet. Some soft targets, so they hang out there, but if you go beyond them, you can usually find a little bit of space to yourself to do a little bit of work in, just as we have here. We've got about two billions worth of ships on the grid right now. Is it worth the risk? Well, only the loot fairy is going to tell us. Just checking the site, I'm sure we must be getting through the waves by now. I did do a quick check a couple of times during the run that I wasn't running low on ammo, actually, because it, I didn't realise quite what I was taking on. 
in the volume of ships. This is the first time we've run this like this, as I'm sure I mentioned earlier on. We're getting towards the end of this site. Finally, no one's come to mess with us. Let's see if all the risk is worthwhile. I'm chilling out and taking some screenshots, so you know I'm feeling pretty relaxed at this point. Although, of course, the tension does mount, where well, it does for me. The closer you get to the end of a site, the closer that loot box is, and uh, getting interrupted near the end of a run is always much more painful to me. You know, those times when you do have to just bug out because you can't deal with whatever it is that's chasing you away. Particularly as a solo alpha when it takes a long time to do some of these sites. It can be a pain. <laughs> You're so close to the loop. I'd rather get chased off at the beginning of a site and just give up and find something else to do. Certainly than put 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes into a site and then have to leg it. But who wouldn't? But look at that formation flying. It's beautiful. Miss Belize's Gila seems a little bit faster than mine. Because if I keep an eye on it, it does keep giving me a very friendly nudges up from behind over and over again but it's okay she has my consent and now we've got the system to ourselves so that's pretty cool not even anybody else in local to be stressing us out we're getting into this final pack of battleships once these are down we'll get the spawn i think it's two cruisers and loot man loot man you just don't want to get too close to him his range as we looked at earlier is about 13 kilometers he does hit very hard. We're just looking in on one of my Kaldari Navy Vespers there. Look, doing his work on that battleship. I'm holding my missiles for the next spawn. That's why I'm not shooting any missiles at the moment. We don't want to be hitting the reload with that guy on grid. If we can help it, we want to take him down quickly. I'm sure we will. I'll put the footage back down to I think it's about one and a half times speed now. Just so... We're a little bit more in real time. I'm going to head right in towards him. I don't really want to get within about 15 kilometers. Certainly not approaching him. <laughs> so I'm going to turn away at an appropriate time. There you go. But he's pretty much dead anyway. And that is it. He is dead. His wreck contains the loot. We're going to take down the cruisers probably just in a sense of completeness. But yep, Far's escalation is now over. All that remains really is to see what is in that wreck. So let's head that way now, shall we? What do you reckon? Good, bad, or ugly? Come on, Luke Ferry. Be good, be good, be good. 454 million. Yeah, that's good. And that doesn't include that vigilant blueprint right there. They're probably worth about 120 million. We'll have a little check. So. We just need to get this loot somewhere safe, pronto. No need to hang around. Make sure we looted the wreck, of course, and just get docked up for now. We shall get the loot out quietly. We'll basically scout our way out just as we scouted our way in. Now we're docked up, we will just check. Let's have a look at the price on that Vigilant Blueprint. In contracts, sure enough, about 120 million few cheaper ones available but we'll call that 570 million so far these modules right here the overseer's effects it's a medium arm repairer that's a nice whack of isk right there they sell well we might even get a bit more for that to be honest with you so a nice little selection of faction modules Took us about 40 minutes to run the second room, maybe 30 minutes to run the first room, and that's the return for that amount of gameplay overall. Anyway, on top of the loot, we've also got quite a nice power on the bounties. Now, this here in Intaki, so this is in, in effect the whole two sites, the whole escalation, because we did the first room, then the second room. So I've added those up, it comes to just shy of 40 mil. So between the three of us, assuming we've got pretty much the same, that's about 120 million in bounty payouts for running both the sites of the escalation that's not bad either added bonus security status polishing which is quite good everything here on the 19th again is from running both sites of the escalation that's got my security status from minus 1.47 to minus 1.23 so that's quite a good jump. In fact, technically it came down from 1.49 up there before we started the ticks on that site. So overall, the running of the site, it's, it's improved my security status by 0.26, which isn't bad. 
cheaper than doing it with tags and obviously this is just kind of the third level of reward for the site we got the site loot the bounties and the security status so very good sites to run for your average reasonably naughty low secker so loot and bounties combined the haul comes in at just shy of 700 million i make it there plus the shiny shiny security status improvement which is pretty good anyway guys we're going to leave it there we're going to be back very soon we've got another second site to run my escalation leave us a like if you've liked it any comments always welcome subscribe if you want to stay in touch fly safe fly brave but for now my friends goodbye